What's going on good people? Today's video will be doing a upgrade of the Falcon Pie Player. I currently have version 4.6.1 running and I want to upgrade to version 5, the 5 version series. I think the current version is 5.5 .5, but we'll get into that after the intro. Hey my name is Kenny and I'm the owner of Robinson Handy and Technology Services. This video is going to be upgrading Falcon Pie Player that I use for the Christmas light show that you see here on the channel uh, every year. And the Falcon Pie Player is the software that is used to run the actual lights. All of the animations and the music, the synchronization and all that, that is the actual device or the software that does it. The device that does it is a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B or it's either 3B or 3B plus, but Raspberry Pi 3 nonetheless. And so uh, the last year, which was 2021, I ran 4.6 for the second year in a row instead of upgrading to version 5 of the Falcon Pi player. And the reason being is because the version 5 came out uh, fairly, in my opinion, fairly close to the Christmas season. And because it was close, at least for me, I was like, do I really want to fool with that? And my answer to myself was, no, I really don't. Thus, I didn't fool with that. I stuck with the old version. A lot of people in the Falcon Pie Player group upgraded. A lot of people in the official X Lights group upgraded. And a number of people had a number of issues with their Christmas light show. Some shows got stuck. Some shows did not run according to schedule. Some shows skip schedules. It was a number of things. So I was like, okay, stick with the stable version. Don't upgrade. Wait till the following year. It is now 2022. It is currently the summer of 2022, although you may not be watching this in the summer of 2022. But now is the time to do those upgrades and system changes or configuration changes that you need to do for your show. The reason you do those changes now is so that you have time to be able to diagnose those issues and fix or make workarounds for those potential issues before it actually gets to the light show season, which for me starts on Thanksgiving and ends around New Year's Day or somewhere in that neighborhood. All right. That being said, we'll go ahead and switch over to the Falcon Pie Player GitHub page. I've actually already downloaded this file here. And I'm going to do the in-place upgrade. The reason I'm going to do the in-place upgrade is because in addition to Falcon Pie Player, uh, which is the custom application that I built for that, I also have my configuration set up on the Falcon Pie Player. Now, at this point, we'll go ahead and go into the instructions. What I'm going to do is the in-place upgrade. And as you see it here, it says the in-place upgrade is new and requires you to have a minimum FPP version of 3.6.2 or 4.0 Alpha 2 running on your device already. So I have the version 4.6.1, so I'm good in that department. Uh, next to download the FFPOS file to your computer, and then you'll do a upload of this file to the Falcon Pi Player instance, and then under manual upgrade, you will select the file and then let it run. Now, the reason I want to do it this way is because in addition to the Falcon Pie Player and the songs and the music and so forth that I have there, I also have the Falcon Pie Twitter application and its configuration on the Falcon Pie Player device. That being said, I want to keep all of that instead of doing a re-imaging of the SD card and having to reload all of those things back on there. It's not that it can't be done, it's just I feel as though the in-place upgrade would take less time than to re-image and then restore the configuration from re-imaging that I had before I re-image, if that makes sense. Um, I already have the Falcon Pie Player configuration automatically backed up. If you do not know how to do that, I have a video on the channel here that actually describes how I do that. It is a cron job that runs, I believe every four hours is what I have it configured to, and it automatically commits and pushes the configuration to GitHub. That way, if I make a mistake, I can easily go back to GitHub and restore it instead of having to always remember to make a backup before I actually do a change. That said, going to go ahead and proceed. I already have the Falcon Pi Player 5.5 file, the OS file downloaded. 
And as you see, I have version 4.6.1 from the 4.6 branch. And here's the IP. I may need to copy that just in case. Uh, so it says to go to the file manager, which is here under content setup, uploaded files. I actually need to delete that one. And we're going to select this file and got a bunch of other junk in here. Probably need to clean this out at some point. But we're going to upload that and it's going to take us a while to do this because, well, this is running over Wi-Fi. I sh probably should have connected this via Ethernet to my network and it would have went a whole lot faster because I do have GigaNet Ethernet wired Ethernet. Uh, but the wireless is not as fast. That being said, I'm not going to hold and drag out this video. I'm going to let that upload and then come back. The upload took some time. Probably would have been faster if I had an Ethernet cable attached, but nonetheless, it has completed. That being said, the next step in the instructions says to do a manual upgrade, and the new upgrade, the upgrade OS button should appear. All right, so go to, I believe you go here to the branch or versioning. Yes, upgrade, and you have the upgrade OS. So we already have the Pi 5.5.fpp OS showing up because it was uploaded to the system. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, can't really select anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and click upgrade OS. And it says this can take a long time. I'm going to click OK. And yes it's got some output here I'm not sure how much output it has but we'll let this run and it looks like it is adding new files as well as deleting the old files I'm wondering if it's going to delete the contents of the media directory under the fpp user directory um, if it does, then of course, then you have to restore all of your items from backup, um, which I do have them restored from backup. But if they do not, do, or if this script does not delete all of those things, then it will save some time and won't have to do the restore from backup. That being said, I will let this run and we'll come back. And sometime later, we're back. I ran the installation as you see it ran a whole lot of output here deleting files copying files moving files you see the you get the general idea well it stopped here and didn't do anything else and so I copied the URL from here to another browser tab and what do you know the five the five X version showed up and it took a moment to actually start you know to load the page but once it loaded the pages it's like oh we're done hmm interesting I have not restarted it yet um, but what I did do was I came over here to status and I hit the status page and then they brought up this initial setup page I am assuming that it looked at the configuration and saw that the 5x version configuration files were not there or something in that was missing and thus it brought the initial configuration page up as you see now, that initial configuration page did not come back up when I came back to the status page. Um, so as you see here, uh, Christmas is one of several playlists that I have. And um, yeah, so it looks like all of my playlists and sequences are there. We'll see if we can go over to the file manager and check the file system. So all of those appear to be there. Audio files appear to all be there. Video files, I don't have any. Images, effects, none. Uploads. Uh, so it does say to remove this one once the installation has been completed. Uh, what I'm going to do though is actually restart first and then we'll remove that FPPOS file. I'm coming over to the channel outputs and check. So I don't have any E131 or any of those others. All of my outputs are GPIOs. And you're probably what GPIOs? Yeah, I have a older. I have a a LED uh, Christmas traditional LED Christmas lights. I don't have pixels in anywhere in my show. 
uh, no color changing lights. I will get some color changing lights at some point, but right now I don't. So everything is uh, using relays and 120 volts, and it switches your traditional string Christmas lights on and off using the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And so it looks like everything else is here the way it should be. Uh, go in here and check some of the other settings to see. And so uh, blank between sequences, yes. The onboard audio, yes. I actually have a FM tuner that is normally plugged into the USB, but right now it is not because the way that's set up is if it's plugged in, then it's also powered on. It doesn't have a power switch on it, unfortunately. Um, everything else appears to be correct here. Disable that. We'll check the time. I'm in the central time zone. I do not have a RTP, RT, excuse me, RTC, real time clock, that is. Interface, usually I stick with the advanced interface. I, while I am an expert at doing stuff, I don't want the expert settings here and whatnot. Uh, normally I do 24 hour time, so let's change that. And we also do the temperature in Fahrenheit. We'll change that too. All right, background color, don't really care, and I don't need a password on the UI. No email settings, no MQ, MQTT. I don't have any CAPE logos. I guess this is optional. You can turn it on and off. Uh, yeah, we'll leave that off because don't need to get those because I don't have those. Not sure if that's a resource hog or not, but I'll uncheck it just for the sake of it. Don't need to enable network bridge. I'm not sure with this all maze transmit channel data even when no sequence effect is playing. Uh, no, we'll not do that for this particular setup since I don't really need it. Uh, it's recommended that all logs be set to info. May need to change those. I may change these to warn instead of info. Um, and as a programmer, most of the time you don't need all of the information that is printing out and that's why I say I may change it to warn uh, at the minimum like warning and error is normally what you do in production level environments but this here is saying only set it to info in this particular production environment um, definitely do not do debug or excessive when it comes to that level of logging so for now I'll leave it at info but I may change it later all right so I'm leaving it on the store the, the storage device which is the memory card that is installed there uh, this mode is a Falcon Pi player player so player mode uh, send multi-sync yeah we'll leave that check I am in the US I do not have a display enabled thus will not be checking that and no boot delay those GPS coordinates may not be correct then on to the developer tab uh, we have some interesting settings okay we'll leave that there I don't think I need to redo any of things on that so that's good so looking up here we see that the playlist is idle the CPU temperature the wireless connection and the current time which is a little bit off but a matter of seconds not like drastically off all right and so that completes the upgrade to Falcon Pi Player. I will do a restart or a reboot of the whole device and not just restart FPPD. Um, and that way the actual device has the opportunity to take in all the other items. Actually, let me check and see if one other thing is running. So we'll run ship that UPS and we'll do a grep for .NET. No. Excuse me. Falcon Pi Twitter. That's what I'm going to do. And so I do not see. All right. And so I do not see the Falcon Pi Twitter application running. So I'll probably have to come back in and reset that back up to run as a system service. Um, which would not be painful but it's not ideal because you're doing an operating system level upgrade and so more than likely when it did do that upgrade it removed the 
service file or file it's one service file but it removed the service file and probably the um, there's another thing entry in the system daemon that it probably removed as well and so I'm trying to see if I see it here in the list system CTL uh, restart but I'm trying to see if it'll predict it Falcon Pi Twitter no eh. all right and so what okay that's just weird all right so it didn't find the service file so more likely that service file got removed and because it got removed I will have to go back and restore it let me see where that file should be because I do have the scripts over here and we'll need to see if they're there all right so should be in the where is this lib system d system all right and do, 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 do. Alright, so part of the upgrade is that it did remove the system service that I had installed for the Falcon Pi Twitter application. Let me go back to the directory and see if it actually removed the files from the plugins directory. It did not. Okay. Alright, so the application itself is still there, which is a good thing, but the and the configuration for the said application, but the system service is not there. Thus, we'll have to reinstall the system service, which is not that complex to do. Just copy a create a service file, which I already have created, copy it and register it as a system service, and then have it start. That being said, that will wrap things up for this video. If you have any questions or comments about how to upgrade Falcon Pie Player, drop them down below. I will be sure to answer them as best that I can. I do note that the Falcon Pie Player version 6 is out, but usually I'm hesitant to upgrade to the latest and greatest. I know some people are very adventurous and want to go ahead and do it. Me, I'd rather play it safe than have a number of issues to come up as the light show season is in full effect. Thus, I'll be waiting till 2023 to do the upgrade to Falcon Pie Player 6 and what not questions or comments drop them down below please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it uh, this lets me know you're interested in content and it lets other people know like those in the falcon pie player community know and be able to find this video when they do a search for it subscribe like and follow and see you next time